One of the things that makes consulting slide decks look slick and professional is chart selection. And one of the most common consulting style charts is the waterfall chart. But you may not know that there's actually three different types of waterfall charts that consultants use, and they use them in completely different ways. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you the three different types of waterfall charts, and I'm gonna show you a bunch of real world examples as well. So with that, let's jump into it. The simplest type of waterfall chart that you'll come across is called the build up waterfall chart. And it's also the one you'll see most commonly. So essentially what you're doing is that you're building up to a total. So you'll start with part A, then you'll move to part B, then you'll move to part C, etc., and you'll eventually come to the total. In its most simple form, this chart could actually be a stacked column or a stacked bar chart, but let's be honest, it kind of looks cooler and it allows you to more easily fit in callouts. Now, callouts are those boxes that sit above the chart and explain something important. For example, it might say something like, you know, why a particular part of the chart is larger or smaller than you would expect. But the real power in this chart is when you want to build up and group at the same time. So what we already have here is a build up to the total. And now what we'll do is we'll group those things up. So instead of showing three parts, we'll now show three different groups. And of course, they're not just grouped randomly. You need to figure out the right way to group things together. It needs to be sensible. But now you can see that we have different groups. And what we can do is we can have totals for each of the groups. And that's something that you really couldn't do if you had a stacked column chart, for example. So this is known as the build up waterfall chart and it's used to show the relative contributions to the total. So now let's look at a BCG example of the chart in action. So this slide is describing how many jobs the creative economy produces in Victoria, in Australia. And on the left hand side, you can see they've got a waterfall chart that builds up to the total. Now the chart says there are 81,000 support jobs, 86,000 specialist jobs, and 54,000 embedded jobs. So as you might've noticed, they could have used a stacked column chart in this case, because really what you're doing is just stacking different segments on top of one another. But choosing a waterfall chart has given them additional space to have the callouts, which are the gray boxes. And in addition, it avoids having too much white space on the left-hand side compared to the right-hand side. So it brings a bit of balance to the slide. So the next type of waterfall chart we'll look into is the movement waterfall chart. And this is what waterfall charts were actually designed to do. So what you do is you start with a value and then you add movements from that initial value. So it could be increases or decreases, and you end up with a final value after all the movements. So we're basically looking at the change from an initial value to a final value. So as you can see here, we're showing the change from start to finish. These are often used to illustrate financial metrics. So for example, net income or a net interest margin for a bank and showing how that changes from year one to year two. So one of the things you often see with the movement waterfall charts is a difference arrow. And a difference arrow is important because what we're really doing with this chart is showing the difference from the initial value to the final value. And one of the things we wanna show is definitely the drivers or what's causing the movements. But the other thing we wanna show is what is the overall change? So that was a movement waterfall chart. So now let's look at an example from McKinsey. So this slide is explaining the drivers of change in net income over time. So the initial value, is their FY06 net income. Then they cover the downward drivers of net income. After that, they cover the upward drivers of net income. And then they finish with the 2009 net income. So as you can see, they, they're explaining why net income has changed from 06 to 09. This is a classic example of how to use a movement waterfall chart. And McKinsey have smartly used a couple of call outs to explain why revenue decline and cost savings are the largest drivers from 06 to 09. So that's really cool. But if I was to build this chart, I'd probably use different colors for the positive movements and the negative movements. I'd make the positive green, the negative red. And I'd also make sure that there is a plus or a minus next to the values in this chart. Very quickly, if you're getting something from this video, please don't forget to click the like button. A very small gesture like that really helps me grow this channel. This next waterfall chart is a little rarer, but I think it's a really cool way that consultants use waterfall charts, and it's called the gap waterfall chart. So in this case, you create any standard waterfall chart that builds up to a total, then you show a gap, and then you show a target. And here, obviously, you're trying to highlight the gap to the target. So one handy tip for the gap column is to choose a different color or a different border style so it really draws the eyes to that gap column. These are often also paired with callouts that explains why there's a gap 
or it sometimes explains the magnitude of the gap as well. So again, as you can kind of tell, these call outs are really powerful for waterfall charts and gap waterfall charts use them as well. So the gap waterfall chart is really powerful for the complication section of your slide deck. And if you remember the video on storylining, we start with a situation, we then describe a complication, and in the complication, we might have something like, we need to hit this target, we only have this actuals, so we have to address this gap. And then we move to the resolution, which explains how to address the gap. So you can see that this type of waterfall chart is really powerful for setting up the problem that we need to solve. If you wanna learn more about storylining, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one, just so just stay tuned for that. Anyway, now let's look at a McKinsey example. So the waterfall chart in this slide is a little bit more complex than the last few that we saw, and it's explaining the supply and demand of affordable units in the county, in Kings County. So let's focus on the middle part of the waterfall chart, which is in that kind of rich blue color. And here you can see they've used that waterfall to highlight a supply gap. So it's the difference between the total supply and the household's renting. And notably, they've used a call out here. So this call out's a little different in its formatting than the other call outs that we saw, but this is still a call out. And this slide actually does sit at the end of the complication part of the storyline for this presentation. And the slides that come after it all explain how to address this supply gap. Now, knowing these three waterfall charts is one thing, but there is a bit of an art and a science to actually building these types of charts. And I was taught back in my consulting days, three golden rules for waterfall charts. And I want to show them to you now. The first one is choose colors with a purpose. You don't want your waterfall chart to have all the same color. What you want to do is you want to use color to highlight different parts of your waterfall chart. The point here is to use color to draw the eyes to the most important parts of the chart and to use color to make it easier for the person to understand what different parts of the waterfall chart are actually saying. The second golden rule I was taught as a consultant is to use chart decorations to help highlight your points. The chart decorations are the things that go around the chart that help highlight different parts of the chart or emphasize a particular point. So some examples are things like you might want to emphasize a change from initial value to final value using a difference arrow. Or you might want to explain why a value is of a certain magnitude using a call out. These are the things that you need to think about and add into your charts to help drive home the points that you're trying to make. And the third golden rule I was taught as a consultant is don't force your waterfall chart. You might really want to have a waterfall chart in your presentation because they look cool, but that's not a good enough reason to have one. And the golden rule here is to choose your chart based on your data. Don't try and fit your data to a chart that you wanna have. So if, you, if your data doesn't lend itself to waterfall chart, don't try and force it. Pick the most appropriate chart for the data and save the waterfall chart for another time. So if you have any questions about waterfall charts, please drop them in the comments down below and I'll reply to all of the comments. And somewhere on this screen, you'll see a link to the video on storylining your presentations just like McKinsey.